reply. How's your morning been, Lindsay? All right. My, I'm, I'm home doing a mix of work and family stuff. Um, but it's, it's going okay. How about you? Congratulations at your home. And not That's true. Off the That's plate. true. There was it, right? There was a, a day Absolutely. not long ago. It gives me so much opportunity to think bigger. And there's, of course, day-to-day -day stuff I still have to be involved in. But no, it's pretty awesome to have people I can rely on to do day-to-day -day while I think big thoughts. That's your job. That's your yeah. job, the big thought thinker, which is how you got here. Yay. Yes. Sitting in the big, thought. big thoughts. Yes. You created this thing from your big thoughts. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. So um, let's get going and tell everybody what you do and how you came to start your business. Awesome. Okay. So my name is Lindsay. I am a speech therapist by trade. Um, but essentially right now I am a business owner. I'm running uh, Spirited Play Labs. We're a community center in San Ramon, California. Yay. Brick and mortar, actual, in, in the flesh, in real life. Correct. It, it had to be. There was a minute where I considered um, using other people's space and kind of moving around, but um, I really just felt like the thing I wanted to build didn't exist. So I was like, I'm just going to go do the whole thing. Like, I'm not going to do the little drib and drab of like, let me, you know, do a little, do a little. I just did the whole thing. <laughs> so exciting. So can you tell everybody that I got to journey that, that beginning? Yes. With you. Absolutely. So every bit of um, success I see you and I feel like, oh, it's all coming true. I feel. Oh, well, yeah. It's a community true. endeavor. I could have never done this on my own. And so having thought partners and people who've paved the way in lots of different respects of business ownership. And it just has really made a big difference because no one should have to do all of this solo. And it's not needed, right? I mean, what, right. what's the story that says I should be able to figure this out? There's I know. Yeah, problem. I know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you want to talk about how you came to start this particular business? Sure. Um, I feel like I've been a speech therapist since 2014 and I always worked for really large systems like medical systems, educational systems. And I often felt like I was sometimes at more often than not at odds with the way the system worked. So like I wanted to do it a different way or I wanted to tweak it. And for a long time, it just felt like that wasn't possible. So I just like brushed up against all these systems and tried different ways to serve families in the way that I thought was ethical and necessary. And a lot of the places I worked at were like giving me lip service, like that sounds great, let's do that. But then there really was no budget or time or ability to do it the way that I believed in. And I, for me, the biggest thing that I felt was missing in my field was um, community among parents. So I primarily serve children with delays or disabilities, um, children with language delays, autistic children, children with intellectual disabilities, all kinds of kids who are showing delays in their first like six years of life. And we would see one child at a time or one parent with their child and I always like stayed up sometimes at night thinking about like, who did those people talk to after the session ended? Like, where did they go? What did they do? Because for me, in, I have a four-year-old and in my day-to-day -day life, I would often never encounter like neurodivergent kids or kids with disabilities in my everyday life. Right. And I like often thought about like, where did everybody go after therapy ended? And um, I, during COVID especially, I just like felt that pang of separation. And I just decided that, that something needed to be done to bring people together in that respect. And then also um, the space itself is really important. And then creating supportive, you know, therapeutic interventions and creating services for families that are really needed that nobody else is providing. And a lot of people have the means, the money, you know, the resources to do these things and people aren't doing them yeah. because they're hard. 
Mm-hmm. They're hard to do. Mm-hmm. So there was a feeling for me of like, why is nobody doing a play space? Why is no one doing, you know, drop off date nights? Why is no one doing group therapy? Like with yeah. parents involved. And I just, I kept wondering until I decided like, okay, I'm the person who's going to do those things. Um, and so we spent a year, you know, in my home talking to people who had similar models or did some piece of what I'm doing to kind of collaborate and learn. And then I decided to completely put all those things together, get a space and Spirity Play Labs was born. Wow. I'm just feeling into when you said, oh, I'm going to make that place. I just pictured you donning the superhero cape. And I don't mean in a rescuey way, but like, yeah. I'm going to come to my own rescue, right? Like, yeah, I, I'm feeling into you became a parent four years ago. So it, you know, it was cooking where it was cooking, but then it became more three-dimensional or, or whatever. It became more real as you yes, entered that absolutely. world. Itself. And then pandemic on top of that. I mean, you're just, you're just creating the thing you wanted. Uh, yeah. You saw and wanted. You my, yeah. My four-year-old. Um, yes. And I mean, part of me, I'm, do, well, I'm doing it for many people. I'm doing it for the people I serve but I'm also doing it for my community of professionals and for myself because I spent so many years feeling at odds with the community that I'm supposedly a part of. Mm -hmm. And I was always like the naysayer and the person that was like, what about this? What about, you know? Mm -hmm. And at some point I just felt like I can't be wrong. Maybe I'm a little wrong, maybe, but like, there's other people who feel this way that I've found sort of nationally on the internet. And then there's also parents asking for this thing. So I don't think I'm wrong. Yes. So I'm going to feed my own heart too, by like making the thing that feels right to me, yeah. um, which is a little bit selfish, but, but I did it for the, you know, the greater community and to feel like I, I fit in, you know, like I could do the work I want to do. Yeah. I think um, tapping into this is my whole, thing of like your authentic self is also serving someone else if there's one there's many and to me it was obvious when you even first told me what the vision was I don't know anything about neurodivergent kids disability really every when you said it I was like of course there's hundreds thousands of people that want what you're what you're envisioning and how amazing that you put it together in this particular way that was not being offered because it's very I mean this the the classic business challenge like I have an idea like it's been done how do you be different you know it's usually about that and yours is like but no but like (laughs) you're you're doing something totally new so yeah and, and to me this is the beauty of feeling into what you needed and saying yes to it right so not of course you know, yeah, serving. there's been so much, you know, I, now I'm re- a lot of like people are finding us online and reaching out to me and asking like, how did you make this model? Tell me. And I'm, and I'm realizing like, I didn't have, you know, this, we only built this about a year ago, you know, it, it officially opened six months ago. But um, I, when I was in that building phase, I was looking around desperately for a model to not to cheat, but to be like, can I just get some vision from some, you know, and there really wasn't, that really wasn't there. So now I'm happy to share what I'm, I'm learning as I go and what we put together before even opening with this model. And um, I'm like giving it away (laughs) left and right to lots of people because they too had this. I can't tell you how many people um, in my profession have come into the space and told me that they wished they would have made this, that it was in their vision, in their dreams and some hurdle, obstacle, mental block, something prevented them from doing it. Yeah. But so many people have told me that they wanted to make this as well. It's a, I mean, it's a big lift, right? The space, renting a big space, building it out for your purposes to be honestly welcoming, like walking out the welcoming. It's physical because we, our bodies in places. Yes, I had to. I had to embody, like, even though 
a lot of it is person to person is the thing that we made. I knew that the environment itself was going to be really important. And mm -hmm. so I spent a lot of time just thinking about the physical placement of each item and what items and right. what is the lighting going to be and all of these. like. And I could never get that if I was renting somebody else's space or just kind of going into like any yoga studio here and there. Mm. Um, and it wasn't something that I like, I know people who are like play space builders or consultants or people who actually that's all they do. And mm -hmm. it kind of was like a hidden talent. I didn't know I had um, using all of my previous knowledge and experience to make the physical space. Yeah. That has been really meaningful. And I've seen just how much an impact just the physical space has when I put the image of like community and, you know, neurodivergent acceptance and, you know, accessibility in mind, like the space itself feels really, you know, impactful. So because I came from brick and mortar, I noticed it, like I felt that power that I had by having a place. Yeah. That people walk in and you don't have to explain anything. They feel it. They get yeah. the message yeah. just walking in. And that's so powerful. I mean, if nothing else, like communication being clear, non-verbally, to me, it's like often clearer than any words, right? And yeah. they're not confused. You're not having to over explain. Right. When the place talks for you, when it's all lined mm -hmm. up. Mm-hmm. Yes. People, they understand. Yes. That, yes. And I'm excited for continuing to, I, I like to mix and match the space every couple months and still kind of change things, update things. It's from, from beginning to where we are now, it's changed iterations like quite a bit in the space. And I love that. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to continue the journey of just like the actual space, kind of like envisioning it and updating it. And like, because it's really about who's coming in and then right. like adapting it based on, um, based on who is in the space. So it's really fun to um, continually revise that. Wow. That's amazing. And of course it's win, win, win. If it's fun for you, just think how fun it is for those yeah. kids. Right. Every time they come, it's a new magical place. Imagine yeah. if your neighborhood playground literally changed equipment every every time That'd you came. That'd be pretty cool. Right. It would be yeah. pretty amazing. And yeah, you're able to do that. Um, you're getting so much love in the chat. Do you I know. See this? Thank you, Winnie. Wanna... So kind. Thank you, Don. 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 Lori. Such an awesome space and heart behind it. Yes. And Winnie Rose says, it is such an amazing space. Thank you guys. for creating and sharing and with us all. Heart many of those people haven't seen me with a mask off. So this might be like a whole nother person. Of like it's the whole Lindsay. <laughs> okay. yeah. You and I work together. You, so I was used to seeing your face. Yes. Through pandemic. Don Teeter, Winnie Rose, Mrs. Yeah, Porter. You. Hello. We absolutely love Spirited Play Labs. The whole team is amazing. Uh, I think we talked a little bit about it, like managing, maybe we'll talk about this later, but like, these are the things to put up on your wall, right? To, yeah. To yeah. On how many people are saying yes, snaps to this? Exactly. <laughs> right. And, and the yeah. part of your brain that's like, I mean, it's not bad or wrong, but also you to, to, to always look at improving and yet yeah. you can also just rest in mm. this love, right? This love. Yes, Dawn Teacher environment. It's good, yeah. It's true, so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've done a balance of like opening ourselves up to the community and saying like, well, what would you like to see? And what, what do you think? And getting that feedback, but also sticking to the original essence and trying to continue to like stay true to what we made without changing so much per person. It's a really interesting balance because I want to stay flexible yeah. and meet the needs of everybody. But I definitely know some people have come in and it really, they've asked, sometimes it's not a fit sometimes, you know, and sometimes the requests are like, no, I don't think that's going to work, you know? Um, but for the most part, I feel like we're, we're always receptive to hearing people's um, opinions, feedback, all of that. Yeah. 
Yes. And I know this is the receptive open is your serving heart. You know, you really want to make the world better for everybody. Right. And yet, you know, the the yes to these people cannot be yes to everybody. Because I was recently on a, a different podcast and yeah. we were talking about how the space is inclusive and it's for everyone, yeah. but that actually means it's not for everyone. <laughs> because when you're for everyone, there's some people that are not available for that. Yes. For sort of the inclusion yeah. of different or different than you in any, any respect, you know, and yeah. uh -huh. um, trying to experience people who love us, but who aren't really, maybe they love the physical space, but they aren't there for the general mission. And how do you um, lovingly let them know, like, thank you so much for being with us, but also like, maybe, you know. Yeah. Well, you holding true to your value. Because I, I mean, I understand the value of this place. It's almost like, oh, it's such a, like, what if, what if we adults could also live in an inclusive world, right? Like, you are making this microcosm. Yes. It's this big. And you're saying, I can't control everything, but I control this place yes. in terms of laying down the expectations and ground rules for entering this place oh my goodness yeah and i've had easy yeah yeah like initially our space was really for infants up to age six and then we kept there's people up to age 20 you know parents are reaching out asking for use of the space and i wish i could give it away to everybody mm. but there's only so much that we can do you know physically and content wise and but i can see that there is a need for what we've created for many different sort of age groups and communities. Right. And maybe someday I'll keep moving along to these different communities and, and providing something. Um, but it's definitely really hard to try to meet everybody's needs from you know birth to adulthood in one physical space. Yeah, it can't be all for you. But then I think of how amazing that you're being generous and sharing the model. Because oh, yeah. if there's plenty of need, there's plenty of room to be the problem. Yes. Too. yes. Yes, yeah. and I will say, like, Winnie talked about that, like, really, so, like, sneakily, the space is for kids, but really the space is for the, the parents. Like, yeah. we have so many kid-centric spaces yeah. all over, um, a lot closed with COVID, but, like, there's so many spaces that are just, like, okay, let your kid go jump on the trampoline for two hours or go climb this, like, mega playground. And as a parent, you're, like, expected to sit on a hard bench and just like entertain yourself and trust that your kid is like fine or whatever. Yeah. And um, for many parents and for many kids, that's just like not going to work. And you leave that space so frazzled and overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, so when I made the space, I thought a lot about parents and how I can make the space feel like it's also relaxing and welcoming for them. That's been really important too. Um, this is this is where all the the magic clicks in. Everybody's happy, right? Yeah, it, right, right. Like, can you give up your comfort for an hour so your kid can be happy? That's isn't that so much the parenting model, yes. right? Like, and who does that benefit? Because I, oh, yeah, like you walk away and then you have to like sort of <laughs> re regulate yourself because you've spent that time focused on your child. But then, like, I know that feeling of like that overwhelm you hit as a parent because yeah. you haven't got, gotten yourself the opportunity to care for yourself. Yes. And then you hit that moment and you're like screaming at your kid or yeah. you're like doing stuff you wish you didn't do. But at the same time, like you were set up for failure because nobody thought about you as the parent and how are you doing today, you know? Totally. Like I hate therapy waiting rooms, most of them. I hate them so mm. much. Sorry if any of you are in here and you run them, but. <laughs> Well, it means it means it's an opinion and it's your vision and it's what's possible. Yes. Right? What if therapy rooms were just as restorative for the waiter? Mm. I know of one woman in Morgan Hill who just started um, like an OT space and she put out crafts for parents. So it's like, okay, if you're waiting while your kid does private therapy, um, here's some crafts you can do that feel wow. good. Which yeah. I, I appreciate that idea. I don't believe in waiting rooms at all. I don't think they should exist, right. but if, if the parent's going to be waiting, at least give them something restorative and lovely to do. 
Well, then it's not waiting, right? If there's something on purpose, right, that is restorative, then yeah. something other than waiting. I mean, yeah, I don't think they should be waiting anyway, but that's just, I that's think, just well, is this, this is your groups, right? Where they, they yes. are in the groups with you. Yeah. They're yeah. And even, well, yeah, play space. I want everybody to, to rest and enjoy, but like, especially for groups, if your child is getting any kind of therapeutic value, like if they're working with a speech therapist or an occupational therapist or the early childhood educator, I mean, the research, everything tells us that parents learning what the provider is doing just by modeling, visually seeing it, um, problem solving in the moment, like that will, like that will impact your child more, but also it will decrease your stress more as a parent because mm -hmm. you know that you are doing kind of the quote unquote right thing or the evidence-based thing and you don't feel like you're flying blind. You feel like you're really being given the tools in the moment. And yes. you're seeing other parents either struggle or succeed with it also. Yes. And like my son goes to speech therapy right now. And I force myself in the room. I go in. And yes. I know it makes the therapist nervous. But like I have to see what you're doing so that I can then go home and support him ongoing. Like there's no point in him seeing a lady for once a week. I, I don't, I don't see the point of that. Like mm -hmm. that doesn't do, that does something, but it doesn't do mm -hmm. as much as a parent being in the room, learning the tools. Well, I just thought I just connected that with what we said about your play space and how environment teaches yeah. or communicates. Yeah. Right. So partly we're, we're taking it to another level of like parent walks into the room and, and has experienced the provider, right? Yes. Um, offering to their child, mm -hmm. wh whatever they offered. And they, you know, it was modeled basically that, that similar yeah. Yeah. environment. Even modeling. just seeing how another person reacts to your child in a moment where you kind of get really stressed by some behavior that they do or some way they communicate. Um, a really great example is I had a child who is autistic and he does what's called stimming where when he's really excited, he puts his hands by his, his face and he like shakes them. Um, and he kind of makes a really high pitch noise and he's seven, I think. And the parents were telling me that for the longest time, the therapies were teaching him on his own, how to just like put his hands away and hide his hands oh. and, um, not show that in public. And yeah. I said to him, well, what if we all worked with him on if somebody is bullying him about it, which he, they said was happening. Like, what if we worked with parent and child to teach self-advocacy, teach, teach the child to be like, leave me alone. Like, why are you talking to me? You know, like, yeah, I'm doing this thing. Who gives it? You know what I mean? Like if yeah. the child is feeling upset that they're being bullied, like give them the power and teach the parent to support them in that instead of like this weird, like, in an hour do a bunch of like over and over teaching the kid to put their hands down. That that's really strange to me. This is beautiful. I can feel it for how I talk to myself, right? Stop yeah. being so weird. I know. Oh. And see like, and, and how, and the parent hearing that like their child was okay to like stim in public, like was kind of, they were like, Oh, I can, my kid can do that. And I was like, yeah, of course they can do it. You know what I mean? Like it's not your just, kid that's wrong. It's the world that's wrong. <laughs> Yeah. Right. I mean, that's right. basically a way you're demonstrating that. Yes. So, and I, I wish that our, my, my greatest hope for the space is that it creates a culture of support for the parents so that when they go out, hey, when they go <laughs> out into wherever they go with their child, they feel um, confident and they feel like they can advocate for their child if other people are not. If other people are giving their child a hard time, right. they feel like they have the tools to show up and be like, Actually, you're the person that's wrong, not my child. You know what I mean? And maybe not wrong, but just feeling like they don't have to like get really small because their child is different than other people's children. What a difference that that child is going to grow up with. My mom had my back. My yeah. dad oh. had my back. Whatever was happening, this doesn't matter. It's, it's you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Yeah. We're so hard on parents, especially parents of neurodivergent or disabled kids, like yeah. we want them to bring their kid to a bunch of, 
programs and therapies to fix them so that they can come back into the greater, you know, population and be normal, quote like unquote. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And like, like Spirited Play Labs, the providers that I bring in, like, no, we're not interested in that. We're not interested in fixing children and in, we're interested in at, get, get, making parents into really strong advocates so that they can go find those spaces that will accept their child and allow them to thrive as they are and not kind of stuff them into these boxes. And I would say there's very few of those spaces, which is- really I've hard. hardly heard <laughs> of any? this message said out loud at all. Much which less. is crazy because we live in the Bay Area. Like, yes. Like we're so, um, and, and that's why I was like, how has nobody made this over here? Like, yeah. there's so many things in which we are so radical and forward thinking and progressive. And then there's something, some, there's some spaces I know exist, but, you know, I chose San Ramon because a lot of families, you know, live there, move there and feel squished into the box. Yes. Um, and I just wanted to let them know that like, there's, there's, you don't have to do that. So you moved into a place where the box is especially squishy, maybe, right? Yeah. People are ready for something, even more ready I, for the difference. Yeah, seems like it. I mean, we've had such a strong, positive reception, um, not even just in the Tri-Valley, but people coming from all over to be with us, because I think they feel like that space doesn't exist in, I mean, San Francisco, Tracy, Discovery Bay, um, Mountain View, um, Lafayette, like Martinez, people are coming from all of those our, areas. Right. Our drive, our yeah. plus. Yeah. I think, I mean, not surprising just from the, the conversation we're having now. And I knew we would talk too long. Um, yeah, so <laughs> longer than the usual half hour. But um, because think how powerful it is. What you just said, what I want is for parents to feel relief my kid is okay. My kid is really great as they yeah. are. Yeah. What, what is, what should that cost? <laughs> should that cost less than one hour drive? Should that cost less than X dollars? I don't know. I, well, yeah. And I'm, I'm starting to get into getting some, um, use, utilizing some, um, funding sources where people with, less means, you know, financially can still access what we're doing. You know, I, I did decide to make it not cheap because um, I'm paying everybody, the employees well, you know, the providers, like we're not, this is not for free. Um, no, uh, but no, I also there are understand people who can pay and there are people who need help and it gets to be win, win, win. Yes. Yeah, so I'm definitely experimenting with um, how do I create something that's meaningful? Everybody gets paid the way that they need to, but I'm not like, you know, doing something insanely overpriced. And then I'm also not um, leaving people out where those that still need it, but maybe can't afford it can still access us. So um, that that's all being learned as I go. Well, and this is all part of the, like, if it's too expensive to you, then it's not for you. Do you that's really true. not have the money for this or do you just mm. think it's not really worth it because, you know, because of whatever story, it's not your job to change their mind. I know. And I think there's someone who's in here that also come from Sacramento. Um, thing. And, and it's funny because I'll have people who live like in the neighboring town of San Ramon, like they live in Dublin or Walnut Creek and they're like, or even Oakland. And they tell me, um, let me know when you build it next door to me in my town and then I'll come visit you. Otherwise you're too far. Yeah. And I just think like, I mean, I'm, I'm hopeful that they feel like there's other spaces they can go to that are providing the same sense of community and connection. But I think it's probably, they're just not in a place to value. Ready. And you can't convince people of that. No. Yeah. It's just you been can. a really interesting thing to see. Like you said, those people who are willing to travel very long distances because they really value it. And those who live immediately next door and who feel like it's it's too far or whatever it's been really interesting i mean it just breaks the whole idea of too far too expensive mm. right like mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. this, this belief yeah you know for you especially as the owner yeah like, 
there so apparently there is no too close that will unlock this for everybody right, right. there's no right. you know less expensive and i know closer. i set myself up for that because showing up with your child and allowing them to be who they are can actually be really stressful for parents at first and can be really vulnerable mm. and so some people are just like not at that spot you know they'll come in and say oh my child was you know, diagnosed with mild autism, or they'll sort of say something that lets me know that they're not fully ready to accept where their child is at, in, maybe in a public space. And I, and I don't want to, I don't blame them. I understand this is not easy. Um, and I, I, but we're here for them either way, you know, but so oh, thank you. Pam, um, I love that. Yeah, thank it's you. Just, you're just, you make me so happy that this thing that you made is meeting the people you intended to make it pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's so, so cool. Um, what is the thing I want to say in our last minutes? Um, what is maybe just, just talk about what I love to ask is what's your greatest joy in your work? Yeah. Um, it's funny being there and not being there. So being there, engaging with families and sort of connecting to parents, that's like my greatest, greatest joy. Like being me and another parent talking about their experiences or whatever, that's the greatest joy. Yeah. Um, and also being able to not be there some days and yep. to be able to just like be in my house thinking the big things, yeah. um, that also is great. Knowing that I, I have worked with my employees enough that I can just kind of let them be Oh, thank you, Christy. Thank, uh, let them be, you know, in the world, in the space, and I don't have to physically be there. No, because, I mean, there's more mountains to climb, actually, right? Like, <laughs> there's always more. And yeah. that you're a whole multidimensional human. Mm -hmm. not, you you are not, It's. I'm glad it's not called Lindsay Teitelbaum. It's called Spirited Playlabs. I know, I know. <laughs> I will start hard. doing... I will, like, I don't put my face out there too, too much, um, but I am going to start to do more, um, like, reels and whatever and start to just, like, say, okay, like, it's my brainchild. I, I, I'm sharing it with others, but it is, it is my creation. Well, you're the, your passion and messaging is going to be powerful for yeah. a while. That is, I think, I agree, you know, I'm, I, I'm super for all the team building, and I love all the talk that we had yesterday about you building your team and trusting them right. and yet messaging for a while, I think still is your, your baby. Yeah. And, and it's, I, I think it's just another way. I mean, thank you, Christy. We need more people like Lindsay in this world. Social is how you get your message out. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's easy to, and, and that's why we're in this space with 11 right. people. Lindsay, Hi. do you have a love? This is so much love. Thank I mean, you. It's really beautiful. So I'm cheering for you. I hope thank you, May. as inspiring for people of all just humans. To me, this was inspiring about like, can we create more spaces where everything about us is welcome and we can stop <laughs> other? But let's start with stopping judging ourselves, right? This is the mm -hmm. thing that would unlock yeah. More peace in this world. Yeah. And thank you for your visionary support and engagement. And I, I really, I really uh, appreciate you as a, a thought, thought leader and like as a, uh, a paver of the way. So I'm just, it's all really great. Win, win, win. Yep. No more zero sum. We all lift up. Yep. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to all the. the Thanks everybody supportive community for joining us here. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Lindsay. Bye, Macy. Yeah. Bye, guys.